battling the heat. Philadelphia and Nicole Brewer of our station KYW TV joins us now. Nicole, good morning. What are you guys expecting there today? <laughs> Well, good morning to you, Chris. You know, we're, we're live along the scenic boathouse row here in Philly, where you can see people are trying to squeeze in that morning workout before it really heats up out here. Uh, to answer your question, here in Philly, we're looking at about 97 degrees, which does, in fact, break of 95. Of course, to twist my arm, good excuse. Uh, wasn't bad enough. Let's fast forward where they actually expect triple digit weather. It's June, and it could be 100 degrees, Chris. It's crazy. Yeah, we're still almost two weeks away from summer. As far as precautions, what What's the city of Philadelphia got planned today to help the people there? Well, at this point, I am told that they are opening cooling centers for the elderly. You're predicting 97 down there. Today, you got us beat by a couple of degrees, only 95 here in New York at this point. Nicole Brewer in Philadelphia for us this morning. Hot is hot. That's yeah, all you got I have it. to say. All right, Nicole, thanks so much. Marisol Castro is here with more on the heat. It to end. We're talking about end. It's just beginning here today, but might as well. What, uh, what's it look like out there? That's right, Chris. Good morning to you. The heat is the star of the weather show. We start off in the southwest where we're looking at those wildfires. So take a look at the critical fire area. It's from Arizona to Colorado. We're looking at temperatures in the 80s and 90s, upper 80s and 90s. The humidity is very low and the wind gusts are pretty severe. During the daytime hours, folks in this part of the nation could see wind gusts of up to 45 miles per hour. In the overnight hours, the wind does start to diminish but then by morning time, the cycle starts all over again. And we're looking at these conditions to last at least through Saturday for the uh, desert southwest. From that part of the nation all the way through New England, we're looking at a heat wave. Summer hasn't even officially begun. Some of these temperatures uh, break records from 1933. It's only June. So the nation's capital, New York City, you could break a record for today. It lasts like this uh, for a while. And of course, we're going to keep an eye on it for you. Erica, back over to you. All right, Muddy, thanks. Yeah. Get a fan and a bottle of water today. Latest now on the economy. President Obama visiting a community college in Virginia this morning to talk about the importance of getting Americans back to work. Yesterday, he said Americans shouldn't panic over the latest slowdown in the economy. For fun, some folks, though, that's probably easier said than done. CBS News Business and Economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis is here with a look at just how difficult it actually is to find a job right now. And I think many Americans would say very, very difficult, Erica. Good point. Good morning. Economic data has been trending weaker, as we have discussed. Now, a new report on job openings raises fears that employers are getting less optimistic about new hires. Not what you want to see at this point in the recovery, especially on the heels of last week's May jobs report, which showed that the economy created just 54,000 jobs. <laughs> Carissa knows how important it is to stay resolute in aggressively trying to find a job, but from October 2009 until now, 2.1 million Americans have given up looking for work, finding the picture just too bleak, Erica. And that's a big concern when you think about the picture going forward, the landscape of how things are working in this country. Yeah, that says a lot. But looking at the landscape going forward, obviously the president trying to be very, very optimistic about this as we hear him speaking over the last couple of days, saying he's not concerned about a double dip recession. What about, though, analysts? What are they telling you? Do they see one coming? And if they do, are they concerned? Some analysts do. For example, Robert Reich, the former Secretary of Labor under President Clinton, believes there's a 40% chance we'll see a double dip. That's a big concern because if there's a double dip in this country, all of a sudden we see unemployment go up again. We could even see gasoline prices go up simultaneously. All of a sudden, the housing picture gets even more bleak than it that was the silver lining, huh? The silver lining is they could go down to 325. I mean, for, I was, you know? I was waiting on that. We'll take what we can get. All right, let's get to Jeff Glore at the news desk for the rest of this morning's headlines for us this morning. Hi, Jeff. Chris, good morning to you. Good morning to everyone at home as well. Back hmm. over to Chris right, Jeff, and Erica. I wonder if she's going to be in the uh, next installment of the X-Men series. It's possible. Yeah. First class. You know, once she's done with Secretary of State. Need a movie. Try something new. Yeah, why not? Medicine Castro. Our own superhero in the uh, weather world. Oh, yeah. Back for more. I'm battling heat. <laughs> one <laughs> one triple that, digit at a time. How's that battle going? Well, it's, I'm losing miserably. Yeah. Good morning, you two. Good morning, everyone at home. We'll show you the national picture. And there's just a big you. We were talking with the floor crew. Snow or heat? I mean, we take, had a horrible winter. Take the heat. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Got a bit to talk about.
or complain. complain about. <laughs> Thanks, oh, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Still ahead this morning on the early show, the pressure on Congressman Anthony Weiner to resign. News business and economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis is back to tell us how the company plans to do it uh, and also what this could mean for jobs in the U.S. I mean, a lot of people say, hey, if you're going to increase sales. Exactly, and it's a very good morning. He took the company, has streamlined operations. Mission successful. Ford earned two points station million. And the future what he thinks in terms of the order of things as far as employees go. That has helped them become more competitive as well through concessions and through new negotiations about what they get paid and how much their pensions are. So to allow them to, to pay those workers less, basically. Exactly. That's allowed them to be more competitive. Uh, in terms of the U.S. that Americans don't. We think now that they're expanding to the likes of Asia, that they can make a lot of money by doing a man there. That's just as we saw. To head more